in our subject human resource management we are down to our last module the workers statutory monetary benefits <laughs> Should I say, hey guys! Hi vlog! <laughs> because that's how most of the vloggers start their vlogs. Hi everything! So last time, I've asked you to make a video presentation regarding interview process and it's about time. Baka kasi sabihin ninyo, utos lang ng utos si sir. Or si sir pa video ng pa video. So to make it fair with you, so eto. I made this video presentation to somehow make our discussion light and fun to study. But the real thing is, this is out of my frustration as, yeah, as a vlogger. <laughs> so I know you are all excited uh, because this will be our last, uh, our last discussion for this semester. And uh, yeah, are you excited? <laughs> yeah, so let's start. The objective of this discussion is to bring awareness on basic labor laws and regulations, but also to serve this reliable tool as an effective guide of employees, employers, as well as, like you, students, practitioners, and the general public. Years from now, you will be applying for jobs. You will start your careers so it is a must to understand your rights as a worker and at the same time as soon when you become a manager to implement proper rights for your employees. This video presentation contains basic discussions that will provide you further explanations on the concept of labor rights. This is actually consists of 19 sections which is considered as the minimum requirements but I will discuss only the most fundamental. If you think there are some vague parts on my discussion, you can ping me up later or rely on the handbook I've sent to you. Are you ready? Okay, let's start. The first section is the minimum wage. This is under Republic Act number 6727 or also known as the Wage Rationalization Act. It mandates the fixing of the minimum wages applicable to different industrial sectors. So for your information, different places, municipalities, provinces, and cities have different classifications of minimum wage rates. And according to the Department of Labor and Employment, through the National Wages and Productivity Commission, minimum wage rate is determined based on poverty threshold, prevailing wage rates, and socioeconomic indicators of the location. To understand the set minimum wage rate of your location, you must first classify the category of your business to whether you are under agriculture, non-agriculture, retail, or service establishment, and manufacturing establishments. Basically, agricultural business is subclassified into plantation and non-plantation. It could be farming, poultry, aquatic fishing, fish ponds, factory, and the likes. When it comes to non-agricultural, it could be academic institutions, hospitals, and other corporate companies. Retail establishments are commonly stores with not less than 15 staff. And lastly, a manufacturing establishment that produces good should have not more than 10 staff. Please be reminded that different categories have different set minimum wage rates. In the latest release of minimum wage for non-agricultural sector, Manila is set to 537 pesos per day, and here in Lucena City is 373. This is the basic pay for all minimum wage earners, and if you want to know the other rates, you may check the link provided here. 
Now that you have understood what minimum wage is, when you apply for jobs soon, you should be receiving at least the minimum wage, but not lower than it, or else it is illegal. If higher, you are lucky enough. The second is the holiday pay. Holiday pay refers to the payment of the regular daily wage for any unworked regular or special day. If an employee wishes to work during a holiday, he will be entitled to the following additionals. But the considerations will be what kind of holiday the work has fallen. It could be a regular or a special day. If an employee work on a holiday which is regular, he will be entitled with additional 100% of his daily rate including allowances. If it is a special day, he will get the additional 30% of his basic rate. However, it happened that it fall during his scheduled rest day, he will get additional 50%. The only restriction on this entitlement would be if an employee was unauthorized absent before the holiday, he will not be entitled to any of this holiday payment. Section 3 is overtime pay. It is defined as an additional compensation for work performed beyond 8 hours a day. An additional 25% of an employee's hourly rate will be added to his take-home pay. And if it is an overtime during a scheduled rest day, special day or holiday, instead of 25%, he will be given additional 30% of his hourly rate multiplied by the number of hours he rendered as overtime. Here is an, an example equation. Assuming that the employee is receiving a minimum rate of Lucena City amounting to 373 per day, you divide it by 8 which is the number of duty per day. Then you multiply it with 125% to get its corresponding equivalent percentage. Then again, multiply the product by 125% and then multiply it with the number of OT hours rendered. There you have it. You have your OT payment. And to get the actual take-home pay of the employee for that day, just add his daily rate which is 373 pesos plus his OT payment of 218.55. In total, he will be having 591.55 for that day. The next benefit is the Night Shift Differential or NSD. It is an additional payment given to employees who works between 10 o'clock in the evening to 6 o'clock in the morning. Same as overtime payment, the additional 10% payment is based on employees' hourly rate. An example computation is hereby illustrated. An employee is paid with minimum wage of Lucena amounting to 373 pesos. You divide it by 8 to get his hourly rate. Then multiply it by 110% to get its percentage equivalent. Again, multiply by 110% and then multiply by the number of duty hours. Example is 8 hours. It is the accumulated from gra graveyard shift duty from 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock. 